Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Class in Session. That's right. This is the Class in Session podcast presented by YB Normal. I am your host, Logan Taylor, with my partner in crime, my brother, the amazing co-host, Mr. Dante Hampton. And we got a special guest for you all today. Dante, go ahead and introduce our special guest. Smith. Um, he's originally from Miami, Florida. I'm assuming he's gonna say go go hurricanes. I'm sure. Um, he's been doing this for over a decade. Um, he's he's <laughs> he throws the U up. Um, he's currently the assistant principal at Brown Academy. Um, Mr. Smith, just tell us a little bit about yourself, man, and what what exactly you do. Yes, um, I've been an educator. I, I'm starting my 27th year. Uh, my first 20 years. I was at um I was a band director, high school band director in Knoxville and here in Chattanooga at Howard and at Tyner. Um and from there I moved into administrator as a assistant principal at um East Lake Academy and now at Brown Middle School for the past five years where I'm beginning my sixth year as the assistant principal at Brown Middle School. Awesome. Awesome. That's amazing. So did you do, did did you teach in Miami um, at any point? No, sir. Um, I went from Miami to, believe it or not, Maryville College, (laughs) Um, where where there's a whole lot of kosher chalk and um, a different way of life. Met my wife and She's from Chattanooga and have been here ever since. Moved here in 1998 and been in, been in Chattanooga ever since. I love it. I love it. So just to just to let you know, I'm a Hurricane fan myself. So I just got to let you know. Go Canes. Yes, sir. Go Canes. <laughs> I am a Hurricane. I am a Hurricane through and through. Vinny the Testaverde, Ulan. Ray Lewis. Yes, sir. I am a Hurricane through and through. <laughs> um, however, you know, I know you've been um you started out as a band director and then you transferred going not transferred but crossed over to becoming an assistant principal what were some of the um challenges that you had to face with being a band director and then crossing over to being an assistant principal um learning curriculum learning the different um um, for the different content areas like the science and the math and the ELA, um, learning those standards, um, math, math, math is very, um, math is taught differently than it was when I was in school. So um, just uh, basically doing a lot of curriculum study. Okay, so learning a lot of learning a lot about curriculum and things of that nature. All right, cool, 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 cool. That's wonderful. What um what made you want to let me ask you this, let's bag up. What made you want to get into education? Um when I was in college, there was a there was a young man who was who was attending my church who was in the band at um at the time he was in Alcoa Middle School band, but um, you know, he was having a lot of trouble reading music. And, you know, but he helped me to, well, actually he asked me to teach him how to read music. So I so I spent a lot of time with him working on his music reading. And um, you know, it sparked something inside of me to 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 make me kind of want to focus and work with band students from that point his band director noticed all the work i was putting in with this particular student Mm -hmm. and the improvement he was making he asked me to come work with his band as a volunteer so i started volunteering when i was a sophomore in college with the 
Alcor High School band. Okay. And from there, it just spiraled. I love it. So have you always loved music? Always, always. Um, Actually, I guess most kids growing up in Miami want to play football. <laughs> um, I want to play for the U, but, um, you know, I was in an accident as a kid and just football wasn't was it gonna work for me? So I joined the band and I um, found my place in the world. I'm always telling people, music saved me. So I use that as a vehicle to help other students. Music kept me in school. Music kept me on the right path. Music, music is what saved me. So I want to share that with you know, other students. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. I think it's amazing how, how you were able to take something that you really wasn't interested in. Right. Right. Um, and being able to transition to go from band director and then go to assistant principal and being able to transition, um, those two different dynamics like i think that that's amazing to be able to do that it's like you said you know hey i wanted to play football i wanted to go to the u but i had some challenges and this is what happened and so you 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 shifted right your perspective mm -hmm. and said hey i'm gonna do it i want to try it this way and this is the outcome from it so i think that that's amazing um what are some common myths about your job um, or the field of expertise that you're in, what are some common myths that you notice when you have talked to people out in the community or maybe some first year teachers and things of that nature? The number one myth as an assistant principal is people think you are the school disciplinarian. You are relegated to discipline and that's all you do. And to be honest, you can get bogged down and that can become all that you do if you let it but but your first job as an administrator is to be an instructional leader is to focus on instruction student achievement that is your first goal discipline discipline yes it's a big part of the job but it shouldn't be the only thing that you do and like most people think because of how we grew up when like we were younger, that's all the assistant principal did. If you got in trouble, you went to the assistant principal's office. And it's not like that anymore. Right, right, right. That's just like before we before we got on to um, our podcast, before we got on to the, the interview, we were talking about community and things of that nature and how, you know, people back then, you know, when I was in school, when you were in school, people back then believed in an actual village raising that child, right? Raising mm -hmm. that scholar. And it's, you know, we talked about how it's not really like that anymore. Um, and that's great because, you know, I think that you said the common myth is, is that most people think that the assistant principal is the disciplinarian or the regulator and things of that nature. And that's not, that's not the case. Um, and so I think that that's, you know, amazing. What are, let me ask you this, what are some of the strategies? Um, because I do know you are at Brown, which is a middle school currently. Um, and then you said you did go to East Lake, which is a predominantly African-American school. Um, what were some of the differences? Like what strategies did you use at East Lake that helped you, that you, that helped you, um, that helped you at Brown. Does that does that make sense? Yes. Um, first thing I believe is kids are kids. Um, doesn't matter what school you're in, kids are kids, and middle school and middle school kids age, middle school age kids, <laughs> they are all unique to say the least. Now, on what what surprised me going from East Lake, which is which was predominantly African-American and really it was almost 50, 50, 50, 50 African-American Hispanic mm -hmm. to going to Brown, 
middle school, which surprised me being in Harrison, it's really like 67% African American. Really? <laughs> yes. I did <laughs> not you. know that. Got you. Yes, sir. <laughs> 67% African American and the rest is um um white, yes. Um and you know, maybe one or two Hispanic families, but it's yes. So it's more diverse, but it is predominantly African American. Wow, I did not know that. That's amazing. Yes, so what are some of the strategies that you were able to use when you were a band director? What are some of the strategies that you were able to use then that you're able to use now? with going into your sixth year of being an assistant principal. Do you see some commonalities in some in some instances? Yes. Um, managing people. Um, as a band director, a lot of times I just, I was managing kids or as a teacher, you were managing kids. And now as an administrator, I'm managing adults. And it's not a, um, and in a sense, adults are harder than students. Really? <laughs> yes. Why do you say that? <laughs> because a lot of times adults want to do things the own, their, their own way. And a lot of times we are resistant to change. So I think that's the main thing. Kids, kids are more adaptable and adults are not. I got you. I got you. I got you. That that makes perfect sense. I, I, I could see that. That makes sense. So how did you, so being in education, for two plus decades, if I'm not mistaken, 27 years, is that correct? Yes, sir. How have you been able to, a, a couple things, how have you been able to avoid educator burnout? And then as well as how have you been able to have that work-life balance? <laughs> to be honest, I haven't always had it. Okay. Especially when I was a band director, I was so focused. Everything I did was for my students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything I read was about music. I didn't read anything for fun. Everything that I watched was about music. I mean, everything I did. So I never really had that balance. Uh, even at one time, my wife and I always joke. I always say it. I want to do something besides music. So I went and bought all these golf clubs. I was going to take up golf. Bought all these golf clubs. I mean, had everything. And they sat into the golf, sat in my garage, and I haven't been on the green yet. <laughs> all that money's gone to waste. But um, now that I'm older, I spend more time with my family because I'm just, I'm just realizing now life is short mm -hmm. and the work is going to be there. Right. Absolutely. It's going to be there. And now I'm realizing also that you know, said, I'm not going to be good for the school if I don't take care of myself and my home. So like you, you, you have to take time. It, it doesn't matter what it is. You just you just have to unplug, check out, and just do something for yourself. When I come home, I still work for like a couple of hours, and then that's it. After that, it's still going to be the, the next day. So I stop and I spend that time with my family. Okay. I love it. I love it. So what are some of the things that you do for self-care? <laughs> Self care. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, right now I'm trying to change my diet. Okay. Doctors want me to change my diet. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna spend more time with friends. Um, I spend time with friends. Um, I do a lot of 
Um, actually, I'm a introvert, so mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time just just alone, listening to music. Right. Just, I guess, finding my zen. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my wife have a. I guess what you call a couple cottage or something, or okay. a couple's hideaway at home. Right. We turn our office into a place just for us, where like we just block out the world, and right. just everything we need is like in this room. Right. So I, love I, I love it. I love it. That's what's up. Who's your favorite? So, with you being a band director, let's let's talk about music real quick. Who's who are some of your favorite artists? <laughs> My. My favorite musical artist, uh, my favorite band in life, Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's your favorite. Have you seen them in concert before? Yes. Oh, that's amazing! Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Um, favorite band, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Fire. I'm a big Public Enemy fan. Okay. Rap. I love okay. Chuck D. Flavor Flav. Okay. Um. Actually, if you want to talk about classical music, I like Brahms. You know, I'm I'm very I'm very eclectic. Let's talk about it. Come on, Mr. Smith. Let's talk about it. Very eclectic. Um, I'm a like Brahms, and I'm a big, huge jazz fan. Okay. Be- bebop era. Bebop okay. era. So I like J.J. Johnson, Dizzy Gillespie, um, well, Charlie Parker, of mm-hmm. course, Coltrane, Miles Davis. Mm-hmm. Yes. So also gospel because i work with gospel choir so i listen to gospel music so mm-hmm. it's just the gamut even country i think anything done well is worth listening to absolutely listen i can get me. down with anything but bluegrass <laughs> i cannot i look i've tried i promise you i have tried i have tried i have tried i have tried but I cannot get down with bluegrass. I can get down with everything else. Rock, soft rock, rap, uh, jazz, hip hop, R&B, gospel, country, uh, the little Zen stuff when you meditate. Like I can get with all of that, but I just cannot get with bluegrass. I can get with all the other genres, but I can't get it with bluegrass. I'm glad you said that. I'm the exact same way. I can't do bluegrass. I <laughs> I cannot. I can even do orchestra, classical music, Beethoven. Like I can do all of that, but I cannot get with the bluegrass. I cannot. I can't. I, I'm sorry. I can't. It's just something about it that is, yeah. Um, it's just too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It literally is. And I just, I can't seem to like really tune into it or really grasp it. Um, but yeah, that's man. So let me let me ask you, what were some of the strategies? Um, when you were a band director, because I know with being a, a band director, um, anything musical, it, it goes through you, correct? Yes. Okay. So how, how, what were some of the, did you ever do any type of like, um, plays or, you know, orchestras, like the band playing, like, like an orchestra for, you know, the school? Like, I know, of course you did football games, um, I don't know if you did. Did y'all do like any other sports or anything like that outside of football? Um, I didn't do a lot of other sports. Um, I didn't really do the basketball pep band because I really didn't like it because of the way the game is structured. You mm-hmm. can't really play during the game. So mm-hmm. it's really short snippets of music. So mm-hmm. I didn't do a lot of the basketball things. Um, let's see. We did, um, uh, we did some concert stuff. We did some jazz stuff. Um, actually, actually, but we used to have a show that we did. We we did like a gospel show where like we would go and like perform at a church. Um, but we did some things where like when the schools had their museum nights. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one time we went at um, Tyner Middle. We we did um we did the cotton club where like but we changed the whole but we changed the whole cafeteria to the actual cotton club venue and the band was the house band 
one year we did so soul, soul train when like we like created the entire show with mm -hmm. the sets and the soul train line right. we did all the background music right i love it that's dope i love it i love it i love it how how did you how did you how did you get students to consistently want to um play instruments because i know of course you know i at least you know when i was in school I didn't know many people that played instruments like that because, you know, I played sports. I was a jock and things of that nature. How were you able to keep the, that community of students? How were you able to keep them and how how did you interact with them and build relationships and things of that nature? First is sh show them show them it being done well. Oh, I always expose them to the highest quality of musicianship possible. Just like when we did the marching band, they had to go and, and see marching band. We did the traditional show style. So they had to see Tennessee State. They had to be around Tennessee State. They had to be around Alabama a and They had to see Bama State. They had to see FAMU. They had to see those guys so that they can see it being done at the highest level. Also, when I recruited, I had the luxury of being the middle school and the high school band director. So just what I did, I always had the high school band playing at the middle school events. So those kids saw it being done well and they wanted to be a part. So I was always exposing them to music being done at the highest level. But that just kept them wanting more. Once you get bit by the bug, you know and I'm saying, but you just have to come. I love it. I love it. I love it. So exposing them. So listen to me, guys. If you want to maximize opportunities for your scholars, you need to expose them to different things. And you need to expose them to those things in the form of excellence. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith said, "Listen, we did the marching band. They had to go to TSU, which is a which is a, a HBCU. They had to go to a and they had to go to Alabama Alabama A and M, which is a HBCU. They had to go to FAMU, which is a HBCU. And they had to see those things done to perfection, right at a high level." So mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, for the people that's listening and things of that nature, and you're trying to figure out how can I engage with my students better, then you want to be able to expose them at a high level for what it is that they're that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So what would you say, Mr. Smith, what, what would you say to or what's oh, better yet? What is one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that is interested in wanting to start out uh, being a band director or wanting to be an assistant principal? What is one piece of advice you would give to them? Being an educator um, is not a job. If you just want a job, go to McDonald's, go to Walmart. It's a hard thing. You have to have it in you. You have to have the passion because it's difficult work and you don't get the praise that like you rightly deserve. You aren't going to get it because the world is very skeptical of us in like education. So like you have to be difficult. You have to have that passion. If you don't have that passion and if you're just looking for a job, education is not for you. I love it. So having the heart Listen, mm -hmm. you ain't got the heart to deal with these scholars because they are future generation. Mm -hmm. Don't come in here playing a half stepping. Right. Mm -hmm. You go know, listen. Mr. Smith said, listen, you can go work fast food. You mm -hmm. want to listen. So I, I think that that's I think that that's big because a lot of times people, you know, we just we just had a, a previous episode where um an assistant principal, she was a scientist and she became a teacher. She became an instructional coach. She became a team, a team lead, department chair, and then she became an assistant principal. And one thing that I'm noticing 
is is that you know you have to have the heart to be able to be in education right she mm-hmm. said she said logan she said she was talking to me and dante and she said logan she said i she said i was a scientist because that's what i was good at she said but it didn't fulfill me <laughs> she said i found something that literally fulfills me and i have a passion to waking up every day and looking forward to impacting someone's life outside of my own. And I was like, oh man, that's like really, that's really different. So I think that that's, that's big when you touch on that and you talk about having the heart and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And, and going back to that, um, as the AP at Brown, I stand at the door every morning. So I see every kid getting off the bus Mm -hmm. and it's something about looking at their faces every day. You, you just get to see you are dealing with real people, kids, kids who need you, who need what you're bringing. You are changing people's lives every day. So it has to be hard work. You know what I'm saying it has to be hard work because you are you are affecting real human beings. I love it. I love it. And oh, you said something about standing at the door watching him get off the bus. What 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 made you what made you want to do that? Because I know that wasn't a, was that something that you were doing when you first got to Brown or when you first became an assistant principal? Actually, yes. Um, yes, because that's a common practice. It's a back, it's a best practice because, um, you, you, you get the, you get the pulse of what the day is going to be like looking at kids, speaking to kids, but you can see those kids who have may have had a rough night or you might see the student who is normally bubbly and that kind of somber. So like right at that time, you could pull that kid aside and it just fought, find out what is going on so that you can get them ready for the day. You can meet that need that they have before they walk in that building, before they walk in the building, it's time to learn. Mm-hmm. But like if these kids have something else on their minds, they're not going to be ready to learn. So at that time, but you're looking at your students and you're speaking to the students and you're talking to the students and like when you're trying to get a pulse of like maybe something went on in the neighborhood over the weekend. Right. And the kids are upset or they had an argument with their parent this morning on the way to the bus stop. Okay, mm-hmm. but we get to stop and we could get to deal with that before they get into the building so that it won't become a major issue. But it is a common best practice that most, if not all, administrators do. Okay, absolutely. I love it. What are some other best practices as being, so we're going to cross over and I want to focus on you being an assistant principal. What are some other best practices um, that you do that you find effective uh, with you being an assistant principal and working at the middle school level? Being real. Letting everyone know, teachers, teachers and students know that we are all the same. I'm human just like you. Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Just being real. Um, um, Not not thinking because you have to have the title that like you are above someone. Mm -hmm. We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing as a band director. I already told the kids. I'm a band member just like you are. We are all in this together. There is not a big Mr. Smith and then the rest of you guys. Uh, uh-uh. we are all together. We are here to help each other. I love it. I love it. That's that's awesome. So just helping them identify to let them know that you're human as well, mm-hmm. because sometimes they they look at you and they put you on a pedestal sometimes, right? And so, oh, uh, sometimes they put us on the pedestal. Sometimes they see us as the enemy. <laughs> this is true. Sometimes they do see you as the enemy. This is true. You are exactly right. Um, and why why do you think that why do you think that commonality is on why some of the scholars see administration as as the enemy? 
<laughs> because some people may have, even in my past as a teacher, some sometimes you may get a administrator who may you might think that they're out to get you when they're doing the you know you know doing the evaluations and the feedback and you might think it's a gotcha but you might think it's a us versus versus them with like some of the mandates that that are coming down um but you got to remember that the administrators we have bosses too and when something comes down the pat pike we have to pass it on we have to pass it along to the teachers but but something that helps helps with that is that if the teachers have to learn something new we need to jump in and learn it with them and do it with them don't don't just pass this mandate down and say you guys have to do this but i'm gonna stand over you and watch no whatever you whatever you have to do i'm gonna do it too so you're not doing the um the whole micromanaging thing right mm -mm. Mm -mm. i don't like doing the micromanager i'm more of a hover facilitator mm -hmm. you're the expert you do what you have to do if you right. need me i'm here to help you okay absolutely got you but i am going to monitor big big because that's a part of my job but the monitoring is like not a gotcha it's to make you better right right i i get what you're saying absolutely get what you're saying all right so i gotta ask you a hot seat question we do this yes. every episode gotta ask you a hot seat question all right um mm -hmm. is there a number and when I say a number, is there a bottom line number? Because, you know, we talked about educator burnout and it is at an all time high now. Right. Mm -hmm. What is a number that you think would be suitable for educators where we could possibly bring that bring that number down with educator burnout? Because we know that, you know, with educator burnout, there's a multitude of reasons on why it happens, right? We know mm -hmm. finances, we know self-care, we know mental health, you know, resources, support, all of those different things. What, from a financial standpoint, what, what do you think is a good number to start um, teachers or educators at? Well, let me start with what is not. Because when I started out in um, education as a 23-year-old guy that had just gotten married and had a child on the way and was making $24,000, <laughs> yes, I saw your face. Run, run that back. Wait, run that back. Wait, wait, wait. How much? $24,000. Out of college, had a wow. wife and a baby on the way, and 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 was thinking, how am I going to do this? My wife was still in her senior year in college, so mm -hmm. I was the I was pretty much the breadwinner. Um, I actually <laughs> I was at Austin East High School, I was at Vine Middle School, and I was at Blockbuster Video. Oh, so you had three jobs. jobs. Yeah. Wow. So, so I'm saying at least double that, fifty thousand dollars. Okay. At least, because teachers are under a tremendous amount of stress. Um, they don't have summers off. They work all summer long training. Um, they spend their own money Thanks. in their classrooms money that they really don't have because the pay is so little and like teachers should be treated as professionals that they are they are professionals um, i hate to hear people who say those who can't do teach that's crazy you you can't teach something you don't know how to do so 
pay them their worth because um, um, because teaching is is a profession and everyone can't do it. Absolutely. I, I agree. Said, Listen, all right, I said it. I agree. I agree with that. Lynn, we can end the podcast with that one right there. I agree with that. He said what he said. That's what mm-hmm. he said. I think that, you know, if there was some type of program, and so, you know, me and my partner, Dante, we talk about this all the time. We have different conversations. And, um, you know, sometimes they get a little heated and sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I think that I believe that they should start y'all with at least 80k minimum and the reason why i say that is because of you know i mean as a when you were a band director you know you being a band when you were a band director you got paid for 37 and a half or 40 hours a a week right Mm -hmm. however you did more than that right you did 50 60 50 you know 65 70 hours a week you know what I'm if saying? If I didn't, we wouldn't have had a band. Exactly, right? Right. And um, so I think that, you know, it's like, hey, we're putting these extra hours in, but we don't get compensated for it, right? You can go to you can go to McDonald's and work fast food and put in 60 hours. Once you reach your 40-hour mark, it's time and a half. Right. You can go work at a call center and, you know what I'm saying, get paid. Once you reach over 40 hours, it's time and a half. And so I've never understood how – you have teachers that are with students seven and a half hours a day, five days a week. And you telling me, oh, we can only pay you 30,000 or we can only pay you, like you said, when you first started out, 24,000. And I'm not getting paid overtime. I'm only getting paid for 40 hours a week. Like, no, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. And I think there needs to be some type of program, you know what I'm saying, to help uh to help teachers whether if it's a housing program to help you get a house if it's a vehicle program to help you get a vehicle right like if you could ease some of the you know some of the some of the the worries or some of the stress that they're having like i feel like that will start to take down some of the educator burnout Mm -hmm. yes sir yes sir okay All right, so I know and we we I got I got one or two more questions left uh with you, Mr. Smith. Um I first want to before we get into the next question, I first want to tip my hat to you um and say thank you uh for being on here as well as thank you for being such a strong educator and a pillar um in our community. Listen, you've been in education for 27 years. You don't see stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just want to give you your flowers while you're still breathing and to let you know that I really appreciate you and thank you for what you do for our community. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. So if you could change one thing about the education system, right? And I'm not talking about locally or just at the school. I'm talking about from a global standpoint globally so this means that this infects everybody if it was one thing that you could change about the education system what would it be assessments testing um not saying that we shouldn't i just think that the amount is just too much that um um it's burning the teachers out and it's burning these students out they get tired by the time we're we're like at in the end of april getting ready for the tcap uh you know we have tests so much over the course of the year they're just tired and they're not giving their best effort at 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 that point also i think with the amount of testing um it has changed teaching from teaching the whole child and from teaching um, to um, from to almost forcing teachers to teach to the test instead of teaching what needs to be taught to to make our students more productive citizens um, to make them more real well rounded. We're just focused on these standards, these standards 
and we keep folks on these standards all year long. We just we have a whole line, a whole line of standards that it has to be taught each year. And those standards get tested and tested and tested and tested. And I just think it's just too much testing. So you think changing, you think changing, changing the testing uh, model in the way that they do things, kind of like not doing so many tests. How many tests would you do a year? Um, we do two screeners. We um, we have three major benchmarks at the end of each at the end of each quarter, and we do TCAP. So 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 um, you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you're thinking about at the end of the school year, be, between the end of April and the end of school, we'll do. TCAP, which is the state assessment, 10 ready. Um, some students, like in high school, they'll do the end of the course test, and then we'll do a screener all in the course of a month. That's a lot. Absolutely. I agree. That is a lot. Dang. Man, I didn't even know they – I didn't realize they, they did three tests in one month. Didn't realize that. Right. Right. And like you also have your formative assessments where where the teachers are gauging the students every so often, often just just to see where they are. Those are not formal, formal tests, but like you have to gauge and see where they are. But if you do have your summative assessments, which is like the regular in the unit tests we all had to take. In your specific classes so it seems like we're just always testing and testing and testing i love it i love it all right so last question before we get off here last question last question last question what are some strategies that you would give to a first year uh principal and before you answer this when i say strategies like what things have you done that work that if somebody was to come in and say, hey, Mr. Smith, I want to be an assistant principal. Can you guide me or can I shadow you to learn some things? What are some of those things that you've done? That you've seen any work that you have seen work effectively. Whether if it's the support, whether if it's you going to support teachers in classrooms and doing their, you know, their um when you're watching them and you're observing them, you know, or whether if it's like, like you said, being at the front door as soon as the, you know, students, excuse me, as soon as the scholars get off the bus, like what are, what, what would you say to a person that's, that's wanting to be a, an assistant principal? Something that was said, said to me, which is so valuable, be visible and be everywhere students are. Be visible and be everywhere students are. Listen, you just dropped the bar. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. You just dropped the bar, my man. Like that was that was good. Be visible and be everywhere that students are. So listen to anybody that's getting ready to be a first year assistant principal. Make sure you are visible. I understand you're going into a new job. I understand that you're going into a new position. I know that it's. I know that you're nervous. I know that you mean that you may be scared, but you need to be visible for your scholars, and you need to be everywhere that students are. Mm -hmm. And what does that look? Before we get out of here, what does that look like when you say be everywhere, uh, Mr. Smith? Well, well, um, as a new administrator, the Paperwork is going to be unbelievable, but the emails are going to be unbelievable. You can easily get bogged down sitting at your desk working through that stuff all day long. That's not what that that is not what is important. Be at the door when they come in. Be at the hallway. Be in the hallways during class transition. Hallways transition. Be in the classroom. Try to visit every classroom every day be in the cafeteria 
talk to students. Get, I mean, but just get to know them. Be at the games. Be everywhere students are. Let them know that you care about them. Let them know they can always come to you. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Good deal. All right. So good deal. So listen, guys, listen, this is the class in session podcast. Listen, if you if you love the value that Mr. Smith just gave, listen, make sure that you leave a review. Make sure you give feedback. Make sure, of course, please make sure that you like, subscribe and comment. You hear me? Make sure that you like, subscribe and comment um, on this video on this um, audio, as well as on the podcast. And listen, Mr. Smith, uh, before we get out of here, uh, is there anything else? How can people how can people get in contact with you and reach you uh, if they want to learn more information about being an assistant principal or a band director? If they want to talk to you about music. How can they get in contact with you? Um, Hamilton County Schools on my, you know, email is readily available. Smith underscore Elias at hcde.org. Um, call the school, whatever I know, you can know. Um, um, these things are not secrets. These, these are not something we should just hold on to. Um, you, you have gotten to share. People have given me nuggets, but those nuggets that, that I use, I've had to pass on. You have to, so, I mean. Anytime, if you see me anywhere, stop and talk. Um, I may not look like the friendliest person in the world, but <laughs> people say I look mean a lot. That's just my facial expression. I'm actually a nice guy. So just email me, stop by the school, call. That's fine. Wonderful. So listen, guys, anybody that's a band director, you're wanting to become a band director, you're interested in music, you want to cross, you've been thinking about crossing over to get into administration. Listen, talk to Mr. Smith, reach out to him. He's at Brown Middle School. Again, Mr. Smith, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, my brother. I really appreciate you and appreciate what you do. And guys, listen, this is the Class and Session Podcast. I am your host, Logan Taylor. Uh, my partner, Dante, he cannot make it today, but of course, my amazing co-host, Mr. Dante Hampton, shout out to him. Um, and before we close, like I always say, why be normal when you can be extraordinary? We'll see you all. We'll see you all again soon. All right. Peace.